a star explosion or nova is going to happen this fall? Yes, it is. It's going to take place in the sign of the dragon found in Revelation chapter 12, 3. And it's likely linked to the rise of the Antichrist and the covenant with the many. You know, from Daniel 9, 27, the one that launches the tribulation. Again, the probable answer is yes. In our opinion, just as at the birth of the Messiah, there was a new star, maybe there'll be a new one at the rise of the anti-Messiah. You know, it's possible. So how do we know there's going to be a nova explosion this fall, what some call a supernova, and what makes us think it's linked to the rise of the Antichrist? You know, those are big questions, huge questions. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and today we have a special episode that links signs in the heavens to what is taking place on this earth this fall, namely the United Nations Summit for the Future and the Pact for the Future that they hope will come out of that meeting. And to discuss this incredible sign linking to those events is a member of our advisory board, Fisherman, who has been a guest on this channel many times. And I think we should start first, though, by discussing the elephant in the room. The question, why are we looking at signs in the heavens in the first place? Isn't that just astrology? Welcome, Fisherman. Uh, we're so glad to have you on the channel today. Uh, would you help explain to our viewers why what we're talking about here isn't astrology, but maybe is something else? Right. Well, humans can look at the sky in three different ways. It can be astrology, astronomy, or what we've termed astro prophecy. Now, astronomy is the science of the stars, the planets, and the heavenly bodies. Astrology is the worship of stars or thinking that their positions can tell fortunes. That's astrology. But you know, astro prophecy is interpreting signs in the heavens given by God in his word. And we see in Genesis 1:14 that the heavenly lights are given for signs, seasons days and years and the word for seasons is moedim it's talking about the abortion. yeah that's right that's right moedim yeah so it's so, talking about these things when they occur around the moedim and the moedim are generally all related to um you know to signs in the heavens because you know it's the phases of the moon right well the sign of the woman in labor happened immediately after feast of trumpets Mm -hmm. That was yeah. the 20th and 21st, and that came up on the 23rd. So they're in close association with Moedim, and that's that's what I think makes them significant. You know, So we're also told, uh, Jesus says in Luke 21, he told us that there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars in the last days. And this, of course, includes those at the sixth seal, but it's not confined to those. So these things are a method that God has chosen to communicate with us, to tell us what time it is on his prophetic clock. And um, so interpreting these signs given by God is a, is a good thing, a blessed thing. Well, I'm, I'm really glad you, you took time to explain that because uh, you can't imagine the number of comments we get where people just don't understand that there's a difference between you know, astronomy, astrology, and astro prophecy. Very important. And as we spoke at the beginning of this video, you know, God sent a new star to announce the Messiah, and maybe he's going to send a new star to announce the anti-Messiah. So, you know, I mean, it's something that we need to consider as a possibility. Now, in Proverbs 25, 2, it says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to uncover a matter. So let's go in and try to uncover this. And let's start with the idea of how can we possibly say that there's going to be a Nova happening this summer or this fall? I mean, you know, I've always thought about these things as like, you know, it's, it's a star that explodes. It comes out of nowhere. You don't expect it. And all of a sudden it happens. How could we possibly know that in advance? So let's start with the question, what is a nova? 
That's a great question. Well, ANOVA is a, uh, it usually occurs in a binary star system where you have a small white dwarf. It's, a, it's, a, it's about burned out. It's not quite burned out. And it's within the gravitational field of a giant red star. So it's a binary star system and it's a thermonuclear explosion in the star that happens when hydrogen transfers from the big red giant to the white dwarf. And uh, when this hydrogen reaches a critical point in terms of mass and temperature, well, then it explodes. And in a nova, this happens in the atmosphere. It's not, it's not at the core of the, of the small white dwarf. So it happens in the atmosphere, but it's a tremendous explosion, bigger than anything that we could even imagine here on Earth. And um, so that makes a something that is normally invisible that you could only see with a telescope, that explosion can suddenly be seen with the naked eye. Well, that's great. So it just to clarify, so what happens is fuel from a very big star travels over to the smaller star that's part of the same system, and then it explodes. Exactly. And what you were telling me offline is that some of these nova that happen like this are recurring nova. You want to explain that to me? Well, yes. Yeah. So you have this explosion, but since the, 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 the small white dwarf is not destroyed, since it's a more superficial type of explosion, it still exists. And after the explosion, well, it starts accumulating hydrogen from the dread giant again. And so once it again receives critical mass, it will explode again, and it can do so on a on a regular basis. So that's called a recurrent nova, and it happens over and over through the years. So the next question I have is, is this common? Is this something that happens all the time? No, no. As a matter of fact, it's rather uncommon. It only happens a few times per century, according to uh, astronomers in our galaxy anyway. So you were telling me that this particular nova that we're going to be seeing this year happens about every 80 years. And, uh, but why are at least scientists very excited about this one? What makes this one different from most of these recurring novas? Yes, well, um, as, we, as we mentioned earlier, uh, most nova explosions are not visible to the naked eye and can only be seen with a telescope. Now, this particular nova, a recurrent nova, which happens in the constellation uh, Corona Borealis, well, it's the brightest of the dozen or so known recurrent nova systems that we know about. And it's it becomes easily visible with the naked eye. Um, it's going to reach a magnitude of 2.5, which is about the equivalent of the North Star. Now, the North Star is not a particularly bright star, but it can be seen easily with the naked eye. And that's quite bright. So the the when the explosion happens, this this star system will be visible for one to two weeks or so. Well, that's great. Um, when was the last time that this star in Corona Borealis uh, exploded like this? Yes, it uh, was last visible in 1946. Okay, so um, it's. 78 years later, we're going to see it again. Um, and it's forecast to explode again anytime from now until the fall of uh, 2024. Uh, prior to that, this uh, particular star was seen in 1866. It was recorded then, and there may be references going back as far as the year 1217, uh, where it may have been observed as well. Well, you know, when I'm listening to what you're telling me and I hear the dates 1946 and 2024, to me, those dates are very important and they make me think of something, something related to the United Nations. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. But first, um, why don't you tell us um, where this Nova is in, and where this constellation of Corona Borealis is in relation to the night sky. 
Right. So Cor Corona Borealis, it's a beautiful constellation. It's, it's asterism is the shape of a cup, and it has seven main visible stars in that asterism. And uh, it's in the northern sky. Um, this uh, particular binary star system that's going to become visible will become an eighth visible star in Corona Borealis. So, yeah, I know when our, our listeners are listening, most of them aren't star people, you know, and they don't know the constellations. And when they hear Corona Borealis or the Northern Crown, which I prefer to call it, um, you know, they're thinking, ah, this is just another constellation. But it's more than that. But it happens to be found in the Bible, in Revelation 12, 3, and the sign of the dragon. Then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns on his heads, with seven diadems, or crowns. We discussed this sign at length in the previous video on the sign of a dragon, and the link's down in the description. But in a nutshell, this sign is made up of two constellations in the night sky that are side by side, serpents, or the serpent dragon, which has seven heads or seven stars in its head and a tail that, as the Bible tells us, cast down a third of the stars from the sky at some point. The sign also has a second constellation with seven crowns, which are the seven stars of the constellation of the northern crown. But when those seven stars expand to eight stars because of this nova, well, that is the prophetic part of all this. It's when astronomy meets prophecy and becomes astro prophecy. So, Fisherman, do you want to explain to us why eight crowns as opposed to seven might be significant prophetically? I mean, it seems odd. It doesn't seem like a normal kind of thing that most people would think about. But when you explained it to me, I understood that it could be very significant. Well, that's a great question. So if the seven heads on the sign of the dragon, if they're analogous to the seven heads of the beast empire found in Revelation 17, then expanding them to eight is a very significant thing. Revelation 17 uh, verses 9 through 11 states it this way. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains empires on which the woman sits, and they are seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and at the time that John wrote this, that would have been Rome. The other is not yet come, and when he comes, he must remain a little while, okay? Just a little while. The beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth. So the beast is an eighth, but he's of the seven, and he goes to destruction. So the beast starts out with seven heads and then expands to eight. And the eighth is the not only the beast empire, but it's also the Antichrist. So it represents both. So expanding to eight crowns or eight heads could be very significant. So you start with seven heads on the beast and you go to eight, just like in the night sky where we go from seven stars or seven crowns to eight crowns or eight kings. I could see that, but I think a question a lot of people are going to have right now is, Nelson, uh, you and Fisherman are saying that these uh, this is a recurring um, nova that happens like every 80 years. I mean, obviously, the Antichrist doesn't rise every 80 years. Why, why is it significant now where it wasn't significant, let's say, back in the 1200s? Well, I, I, think, that's, I think that's an important question to address. Well, you know, the, the difference is, is that we're, we weren't in the last days back then, and we are today. Israel has been reformed as a nation, and the leaves on the, on the fig tree that had withered, well, they're now sprouting. Well, this makes this Nova event potentially significant now, whereas in the past it may not have had significance in a similar way, you know, they think that the that the Bethlehem star may have been a conjunction. Well, conjunctions happen all the time. That particular conjunction happened at the right time. So that was important. Others, maybe not so much. So I think the 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 trigger here is, is that 
the reformation of Israel as a nation and the leaves sprouting tell you what time it is on the prophetic clock. I think that is a like a super, super answer. And I, I hope that makes it clear to everybody that, you know, we're in very special times right now. So things that are happening in the heavens can be more significant now than they were a thousand years ago. And if we look at those last two times this happened, 1946 and the the one that's coming up this year, 2024, these were very significant years in the history of the United Nations. And we both believe the United Nations is going to play a very significant role in the future. So do you want to go into that a little bit? Well, sure. Um, it, you know, in late 1945, you know, the groundwork was being laid for the United Nations uh, to replace what up till then had been the League of Nations. And in 1946, the UN actually held its first General Assembly meeting. And the UN Security Council held its first meeting in the month of January, which was in the month prior to the Corona Borealis Nova event. Now, in 2024, we anticipate that the UN is going to evolve itself into a new entity, essentially one with new powers over the sovereignty of the states, the nations. And as such, this NOVA could be an announcement of sorts to the world of a major event predicted in the Bible, the covenant with the many of Daniel 9.27. And the League of Nations officially folded in April of 1946. So we see the, the UN morph, morphing from the League of Nations into the UN back in 1946. We expect a similar morphing coming up uh, this fall. Well, that's great. Thank you. Because something that happens this fall is called the Pact for the Future. Uh, it's something that the United Nations is hoping will remove sovereignty from the um, from the individual nations and give it to a world governance system. Uh, I'm just saying those words. I'm sure most of our listeners are aware that that could be very significant in terms of Daniel 927 and the covenant with the many. But one thing about that covenant with the many is that a he is going to make or enforce or empower that covenant in a special way. And if that he happens to be the Antichrist, well, that's maybe something that we should discuss how this Nova may be portending the coming, even if it is somewhat um, not visible to the world, of a man behind the scenes who's going to enforce this covenant. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? So I believe that in the in the verse of Daniel 9, 27, the higbir is the form of the root word gabar. And it generally means to cause to strengthen because it's a hyphal, it's a causative verb. The strengthening is not done by that person. He causes it to happen. And um, so I believe that uh, if he does something which strengthens a covenant or causes the United Nations to enforce something, um, then uh, he could fulfill both of those. And that could mark that person as the little horn of Daniel 8. So could we stop right there just for a second? Because I think this is a really important point that it isn't necessarily the he, which could be the Antichrist, making the covenant as much as it is he's doing something that causes either the enforcement or the strengthening or something like that, right. some it's a word of power, right. empowers the covenant, enforces the covenant. So he causes those things to happen, but it right. could be another entity like the UN actually doing the enforcing, empowering, et cetera. He's causing that to happen. Right. And this Pact with the Future, which is on the 23rd of September, as you know, is the seven-year anniversary of the sign of the woman in labor, exactly seven years to the day. Um, so I think in that sense that that sign was pointing seven years in the future 
as a, and we had a we had seven years warning in advance. Now, what is the form of this going to be? Well, I think as we get closer, we're going to understand better. Something that's on the table is the two-state solution. Right now, Netanyahu says that it'll never happen on his watch, but Gantz is very favorable to it. So, and and as far if if Israel had an election today, there's a question of whether or not Netanyahu's side would prevail. So they're under tremendous pressure politically, and I think we're going to see this even increase in the coming months into the fall. But it's a big item on the world agenda, and I could easily see this pact for the future swallowing up this effort to cause Israel to move to the two-state solution. You're, it's going to be couched in the words of peace and security, and it's the, the world's going to be ecstatic that you know, that this has happened, that Saudi has joined the Accords, the Palestinians have a state, peace in our time. And that, that's how I think it could unfold. So if we look at this in, in combination of what's going on, we have a new star coming and joining seven other stars that could be and, and are in the sign of the dragon, the, the, uh, the crown's of the beast. So there's an eighth crown coming, but it may not be one that we can see clearly right now and know exactly who that is, but we can know this might be happening behind the scenes and that someone behind the scenes who may be the Antichrist is actually causing these things to happen. I think it's uh, very likely that this eighth star is... Um could represent the, the, not one of the seven, but the beast himself is the eight. So we may be, we may be witnessing this come, coming this fall. You know, it's like God gave us a warning in 1946, and we're seeing this pattern unfold again right at the right time. So, you know, the recurrent nova is an ideal tool that God would use to say, hey, this is important. Take a look at this. I'm speaking to you. You know, take notice. I think we have to be a little bit careful in identifying the man of sin just yet. Jesus gave us a very specific sign, the abomination of desolation, when the man of sin sits in the temple of God and declares himself to be God. And that's the sign of who the Antichrist is. That's how we identify him. Click right here to keep watching to learn why this is the most important sign of all in the end times and why it's important and what Christians should do if and when they see it. Tell them this is Nelson and I'll see you there.